Hey everybody, my name is Mario Martinez and this is Amateur EMS. So, today I'm going to be going over a quick video series uh, going over EKGs and ECG rhythms, starting with the basics. Now, uh, this may not be too important or relevant for EMT basics, but all of you are planning on going into medic school at one point, so this will be relevant at some point, or at least I hope you consider that. Uh, so, to start off with the basics, some people think of the heart, they think of this image right here, right? The classic little heart that's in cartoons, things like that. Some people, when they think of a heart, uh, they think more cardiac-wise, more of like this big old sack of meat where you have like your atriums here, your ventricles, and your aortas, uh, your inferior and superior vena cava, things like that. But for the sake of EKG rhythms, unless we're talking about heart blocks, I'd highly recommend that you think of the heart as a box, okay? So when we think of the heart as a box, we think of the, making sure I got it, the right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. Okay, and so the main jobs of the atriums uh, is to fill up blood to the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Uh, so the right atrium will receive deoxygenated blood. It'll fill up uh, while it's kind of leaking towards the right ventricle already, like that's filling up with blood. And then it fills up the rest of the right ventricle that then pushes out and pushes blood towards the lungs. The lungs oxygenate the blood through gas uh, perfusion. And then it fills up the left atrium, which then pushes into the left ventricle. And the left ventricle is gonna be the biggest part of the heart because the right ventricle only has to push to the lungs, which is just from here to here. But the left ventricle has to push all the way down to your lower extremities and to your fingertips. So it's gonna push really hard. That's why there's a lot of muscular tissue, especially around this part of the heart. And it pushes really hard and sends blood to the rest of your body. So that's a general thought process of how the heart works. So you have your right atrium, left atrium, and your right ventricle and left ventricle. Now, when these squeeze, these generally squeeze at the same time. And then the right ventricle and left ventricle will squeeze at the same time. And so this is a really weak squeeze because all they're doing is filling these up so it doesn't have to travel far. And then the right ventricle and left ventricle have to squeeze a, quite a bit harder. So this will squeeze harder uh, going to the lungs, but this will squeeze really hard because it has to reach our toes and our, our fingers. Uh, so it's a bit stronger of a squeeze. Um, that's gonna be relevant whenever we're interpreting four leads and 12 leads later. So now that we have an idea a little bit about the right atrium, uh, left atrium, the right ventricle, left ventricle, let's go more into detail about the EKG or the four lead. So uh, this is going to be the electrical conductivity of the heart in motion. Okay. So right here you have what's called a P wave. Okay. So we're going to label this as a P wave. Okay. Sometimes patients have a Q wave, sometimes they don't. I believe it's indicative of a past uh, cardiac event, but don't look too into it or a past lack of oxygen moment. It doesn't always have to be cardiac as far as like a heart attack, but um, don't think too much about that right now. Let's see. So we have our Q, we have our R wave here. And then we have our S. And then right here, we have our T wave. And if you think about it, whenever we talk about STEMIs, uh, STEMI is ST elevation uh, causing a myocardial infarction, or STEMI. Uh, we're not going to go that into that for today's video, but we'll talk about that another time. Uh, but the important thing to note is that we have our P wave, our QRS complex, and our T wave. You can see a lot is going on during our QRS complex. So what we're really looking at here is we have our right atrium and left atrium. They're the two atriums. 
and we have our right ventricle and left ventricle. Now those are going to squeeze a lot harder. So as the electric, uh, electric conductivity goes through the heart, first we have our P wave. Our P wave is if it, this hand is my atriums and this hand is my ventricles, the atrium is going to squeeze and it's going to fill up blood into the right ventricle and left ventricle. So the atrium will squeeze. As the atrium squeeze, we're going to move towards, towards our QRS complex and our ventricle is going to squeeze. The same time that our ventricle is going to squeeze, the atrium is going to release to refill up with blood. Then we move to our T wave. That's whenever the ventricles will uh, expand and start to refill up on blood and then the cycle will continue. So if we're going down the line from P, Q, R, S, T, our atrium or our atrias squeeze, then our ventricle squeezes these open and then our uh, ventricles relax. And the whole point in having the atriums, I know you might think, well, what, what's the point of them? It's basically like a two pump kind of system that allows blood to fill up faster. So instead of just relying on the negative pressure of the ventricles to soak up or suck up blood every time, it kind of gives them that extra fill time so that way they can fill up faster so your heart can move faster. Uh, it's generally for mammals, we need a faster metabolism, so we need a faster heart rate. To do that, the two pump system works a lot better than us just having ventricles that use negative pressure to fill up on blood. It kind of creates a fail safe system. So, Again, we have our P wave squeezes, our QRS, or our ventricles squeeze as the atrium releases, and then our T wave where that also releases. And then your heart resets. The whole time the atrium is filling back up with blood. Now, the really interesting thing about the QRS complex is if you think about it, the power generated from our ventricles is a lot more than our atriums whenever they squeeze or it, it just requires a lot of energy so the refilling of the atrium actually gets lost into the qrs complex because it's so uh it's it generates so much more energy that we need the ventricles or the ventricles will display uh more of like a prominence over the uh, atriums whenever they're both working together at the same time so what I generally like to do with students at this point is if you're watching this video, go ahead and put your hands like so. And remember, the top part's going to be the atrium. The bottom part's going to be the ventricles. And as I move my finger across, I want you to contract or relax whenever you think it's necessary. If you have partners, you can have one person doing the atriums, one person doing the ventricles, and then rotate. So if I'm over here, the atrium's going to squeeze. If I'm over here, the QRS is going to squeeze while this releases. So we have our P wave, our QRS, our T. So you should go like so. So the P wave, while this stays open, the QRS, so this stays closed and this stays open. And then the T wave, while this, uh, sorry, while this opens up and uh, relaxes to refill up. So we have our P wave, our QRS, our T wave, our P wave, our QRS, our T wave and our P wave, our QRS and our T wave. So we'll stop it here today, but in the next video, I'll go more into depth on the difference between a four lead and a 12 lead, and we'll move from there. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this, please leave a like and a comment. Maybe consider subscribing. It helps me know that you guys like this kind of content and I should continue making it. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.